And Jim and I are going to find out how's the hike on the North Boundary Trail to Snake Indian Falls and beyond. Great to be underway and uh, to my left, and I'll show you in a second, the Snake Indian River. Great to be back along the Snake Indian River. It's going to be epic. Really glad that Ann and Jim invited me on this hike because if you've watched my North Boundary video, you know that we started at Rock Lake and I missed this entire section. And being the nerd I am, seeing this part of the trail and the campsites has been in the back of my mind for quite some time. So super excited. And of course, to see Snake Indian Falls, which one of the scenic highlights of the North Boundary that we missed. So it's going to be good. Hey, look, a bridge on the North Boundary Trail. <laughs> Just teasing, there are quite a few of them actually that are still existing. You can see why it's necessary when you look there. Nobody's walking across that. That said, we've got some work to do. Up the hill. Yeah, gorgeous. Shut in wildfire. You can see though how the forest floor starts to rejuvenate itself. I'll look backwards. But yeah, we drove in of course the Celestine Lake Road and the burn from the uh, Cheddarman fire creates quite a stunning look. You know, that's something. Isn't that remarkable? Wow. I'm gonna zoom in here, there's a little bunny on the trail. This will be shaky. First wildlife sighting, oh, there he is. Gorgeous stand of aspens here. Just stunning. First milestone coming up, Celestine Lake uh, Trail, which cuts off. At about five, just over five kilometers from the trailhead. Then we have another 12 after that to Shale Banks. On our last night, we're gonna stay at Celestine because uh, then it's only about 5K to the car. So we can catch that one-way traffic on the uh, Celestine Lake Road, which if you've never driven it, oh baby. I'm glad Ann and Jim have a truck. Old school sign. That X on the end is actually a tent. And uh, if you're going into the lake, you go up here and make a right. So we're gonna bear left and continue on the north boundary. But as I mentioned, when we come back, we're gonna stage ourselves in at the lake for the night so we can time the, uh, the one-way roads back to Jasper. So, see you in a couple of days. But for now, this way. I'm just joking, I'm such a nerd. This is this is a sign I've wanted to see forever. Really? You don't get this when you start at Rock Lake. Look at that. Woohoo! And look at that. And look at that. Wow. Oh the old marker, look. Does that say zero? Yeah. Zero. Had a nice lunch break, topped up on some water, and uh, now we're just navigating this little washout. No big deal, trail's been in great shape. Lots of new deadfall clearing this year, which is much appreciated. All right, a little view up ahead there. Ann and Jim are up ahead, a little peek at the mountain through there. That's a great walk so far today. I'm still geeking out about being back on the north boundary. <laughs> just such a great trail. Oh, speaking of views, boom. Well, there's our first bear sign. And I didn't show you this on video, but uh, Han and Jim discovered a bird that had been recently hunted. And uh, it was kind of weird that the little beautiful butterflies were having lunch on the bird. <laughs> ah, recycling starts with nature. Jim just spied this... Uh, Wildlife camera, hello, how are you? And then over here, 
you can see the barbed wire wrapped around the tree and you can even see the fur on it over there. Some fur on this one. Yeah, very cool. All these butterflies here feasting on recycled <laughs> proteins. Let's, let's just call it poop. Here we thought they were cute, didn't we guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. Mmm. Got some thunder rolling around us. We're less than two kilometers from camp. Interesting to see something like that after walking kind of through the same stuff for a little bit. And then a little bit of a view opening up ahead of us. So we're going to try to beat the, the rain if it comes and uh, get into shale banks here pretty quickly. Well, we've just come up to the intersection. Uh, Gaia shows a spur trail heading down toward Snake Indian River. And, uh, and there's a clearing up there. So we're gonna find camp and I'll show you around. Well, walk toward that clearing and there's your campsite sign. Shale Banks. A little tour of camp is promised. Of course, that's the tiny little spur trail that comes from the main trail. When you walk in, you're immediately greeted by the bear pole. So in this national park, you can hang your food like that. You can use an ursac or a bear canister as long as you use it properly. Now, Anne has a fire going. Nice job. Thank you. Look at that roaring thing. I know. Yeah, I'm laying in the tent having a little rest and I hear this snapping in the woods and I thought both Anne and Jim were literally in the tent and no, Anne was out collecting firewood, which we appreciate. I, it was a bear. I didn't think it was a bear. I thought maybe an elk. <laughs> This also is not an elk. Jim is uh, getting the solar going. Little shot I've pitched here. And they're down here and I'm gonna keep walking because just beyond their tent is the privy. All right, this way. Let me show you that. Really not that many steps from their tent, to be honest. It is our old friend, the pole and the hole. Actually, this one's quite deep, and I'm going to show you. Hasn't been used in a while. I actually, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I actually really like the poles and the holes uh, better than the stadium seating and the, uh, and the green space capsule one. And even I like them better than the outhouses because, you know, woof, lots can go on on a hot August afternoon. So, uh, of course... The best way to do it is to know how to dig a hole, where to dig a hole, and how to leave no trace. But the old pole in the hole, my second favorite option, when duty calls. All right, we're going to go enjoy the fire and contemplate supper. It's a lovely little spot here, actually. I really like this campsite. I didn't have a lot of expectations for it, really, but... Uh, but now, no, she's, uh, she's a good one. All right, we've come back up out of the campground after a lovely supper. And you may remember this spur trail that we noticed on our left on the way in. This is gonna take us down to shale banks. So I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna make you walk with us the entire way down, but let's go see what we can see. Look at this, look, boom. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Let's go over here and uh, have a look around. Wow. Shale banks. Did you guys bring your paintbrush? Anything? No. No. It needs a little TLC, but it's amazing. Firewood. Shed. And a uh, pretty stunning view right there. Oh man, what a day. Back on the North Boundary Trail and I have to thank Ann and Jim again for this invite. 
Um, it's just geeky, nerdy side of me. And, and seeing that cabin tonight and uh, shale banks and stuff, you know, it takes me back to when Evelyn and I were looking at the north boundary uh, so her, Olivia, and I could go do it and all these places you see on maps. And uh, as I said earlier in this uh, uh, today, that you know, I missed these when we did uh, the Rock Lake entrance, which was fine. I mean, it was an amazing hike, no, no regrets. But now to be out here to get to see this stuff, I mean, it's just uh, so thank you. Uh, they've gone down to, uh, to clean up which I just finished because it was hot today. I won't show you, but uh, a lot of times what happens on my, like my legs, I'll get a heat rash from the two layer sock system, the boots and the gaiters. And of course I'm wearing my convertible pants, which are a little heavier with the thought that I can convert them if it's hot and then I just don't. So it's like, Stuart, come on, man. Anyway, tomorrow's gonna be super exciting. Um, we're going to get to see Snake Indian Falls and and seldom in hiker and seldom in horse on our way to horseshoe so i'm just closing off the north boundary and that's going to be a it's gonna be a pretty awesome day mixed bag of weather in fact we got some rolling in now which is why i'm doing this wrap up without ann and jim because typically we'd we you know we'd be, want to be together for that but um we'll do that tomorrow uh weather permitting so oh and what do you think of the shirt so <laughs> this is funny. The stink is real. This has now become a thing. In fact, I should get a How's the Hike shirt that says the stink is real. That's not a bad idea, actually. Anyway, it's a birthday present. Uh, merino wool. Doesn't smell. I think they did it for themselves, really. Not, not. I mean, I'll, I love the shirt, and I'm. thank you very much. It's a very generous gift. Uh, but I think, I, think, I think they just did it to protect themselves from... Right. Anyway, thanks for watching day one. Heading to the tent. I think it's going to rain. We'll see you in the morning for Snake Indian Falls. <laughs>
And as you know, we're heading to Horseshoe. So a quick look here. Look at this field. <laughs> a lot of grass. Nice little fire pit area though. And as you can see, the privy is over that way. I'm assuming a pole and a hole, but man, trying to get your tent down in this? Look at the bear hang. Oh, thanks, that's right. The, the bear hang on the way back to the privy and it's up. Thank you, Ann. All right, sell them in. Some old telephone wire, which would have been strung between warden's cabins, right? That's yeah, correct. back to headquarters in some way. We've seen uh, lots of insulators and remnants, but that's the first big uh, loop of wire. These uh, trails have so much history and heritage. It's just amazing to be able to get out and see it. Okay, the north boundary continues that way. And Snake Indian Falls is 100 meters down that way. So, finally going to get to see these. Ooh, 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 let's go. Well, what do you think? <laughs> wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo! Oh man. Are you kidding me? Snake Indian Falls! You can only get here if you walk in. And it's spectacular. Alright, so we're walking over here a little bit. Look at this. Look at this gorge on the other side. Look at that, and all the, and all the deposited trees. Wow. I'm gonna go over this way and show you the, uh, the famous outcropping. It's, uh, hang on, I'll just show you, it's quite something. Yeah, so over here, Jim's over there. This is like a beach over there. People have camped there. That that is there's a campfire pit, and somebody has camped right over there, here on the north boundary at Snake Indian Falls. Look at this. The amount of water moving through there right now is unbelievable. Just one last pan around of this. This is just woo. an eye out here there's a couple of I don't know what to call them other roads other trails like there's one going there and then there's one up here keep an eye for the signs let's go see whoops <laughs> let's go see what this one looks like what are we seeing guys nothing about a horse camp I think it's the one that's not flying oh hmm So we've turned around just a tiny bit and taken this very well-marked trail down toward the river. No sign for the horse camp, but my recollection when you look at it on the map is that it is off to the left of the trail and down toward the river a little bit, but no sign. So, could be a dead end. And if it is, you'll never hear this clip. <laughs> well, the clip remains because we have found evidence of something. It's got to be the old horse camp. So. Yep. No signage though, which is weird, but look at this piece of paradise. Hello, daisies. Oh, wow. Picnic table? I need to get a horse. Yeah, let's go look at this. Oh, wow. Yep, seldom in horse camp. This is beautiful. Very beautiful. We're gonna have some lunch. We just finished drying a bunch of stuff off and Anne went down and spied some cool things to see. Yeah, nice lingering lunch. Dried off the tent, aired out the sleeping bag. It was a pretty wet morning. All right, what are we gonna see down here? 
Oh wow, that's looking down river. Look at that. Holy mackerel. Couple of braids here, okay. Lovely spot to come out and dry out some clothes, do a little solar charging, and just take in this panorama of the Snake Indian River. Even have some, uh, even have some shale here. What a place, my goodness. Ann and Jim are gonna look around a bit more. Mentioned this morning that Ann's, or Jim's grandfather rather, was uh, a warden out here. Oh, there we go. So there is a sign here. Interestingly, it shows that Horseshoe can be approached from down here. And when you look at the old map that Jim has from his grandfather, from his warden days, yeah, there's a loop down here for sure. And a hiker bypass up top. So, uh, interesting. We're gonna look around a little more. And Jim had just said there's an insulator down here. Those, remember those old telephone wires I showed you a few minutes ago in the video? Well, they ran down here. Meaning this could be the old site of, what was it called? Snake Indian Shelter? Yes. Snake Indian Shelter. May have been here at one point. So they've spied this little depression here. This could be concrete. Did you say, Jim, they used to pour it for steps? Quite often. I yeah. Concrete front steps. Then I said, it feels like you guys are on the curse of Oak Island. Could it be? <laughs> Knights Templar. There we go. It's the Knights Templar. Let's get digging. Oh, wait, we can't. It's a national park. Templar, baby. That's very cool. Very cool. I, yeah. We're pretty sure by looking at the map that this is the old Snake Indian Shelter area. Because there's a trail I found that goes up that way. And on the maps, it shows a loop. Well, not a loop, but, well, it wouldn't be a loop. A bypass or something. Yeah. Fascinating. And I think that tall green grass? Yeah. Remnants of the outhouse. <laughs> ah! <laughs> well, poop! Now we're going to go look at the remnants of the grass. I'm going to keep this rolling. This is new for the channel. Don't fall in the hole <laughs> if there is one. <laughs> That's actually really funny, Jim. All right, we're going to head over this way and see if this trail will lead us back to the main without too much work. A little mucky through here, but it certainly does look like an old trail. And as I said a second ago, the map does show kind of a loop down here and then back up. So instead of backtracking, we're going to explore a little more and see if this does indeed go anywhere. If not, we'll just turn around. Ann and Jim are just pointing out more of the old telephone wires on these trees way up high. And Jim surmised that probably this is the original you know, patrol trail. It's because we think we were there at the Snake Indian Shelter for sure. And uh, before the road came in. So we're going to get to see this old trail tomorrow and the more, I guess we'll call it the newer one on the way out. I'm sorry, today and the new one on the way out tomorrow. And I was just mentioning as well that Gaia has two layers I'm using. I've got the uh, Gaia layer, which shows the trail in a different place. And the Back Road Map Books Canada hiking trail shows this as the trail. And they do sometimes defer to the old horse trails, which is interesting. So always something to explore. And look, bingo, an old insulator. Of course, an insulator. Yeah, old insulator right up there in the tree. We started at zero and now we know we're on the old trail because there's the 15 mile marker. Pretty cool. Well, we've had to put on the hot suits. Rain is coming. If it's anything like yesterday, it'll probably pass quickly. It just gets you a little, little warmer from the inside out, you know? Beautiful boardwalk style bridge here. An amazing shape, can't be that old. A little bit of deadfall to contend with at this end. Otherwise, it's been just stunning. Beautiful walk in the woods. I'll try to zoom in with the shaky video. Look at the size of this owl. Look at that. He just flew away from us. Maybe we'll get a closer look. Gorgeous. No, they're not going where the trail is. The trail is that way. And we have run into some pretty bad... Deadfall. Bushwhack away.
The saga continues. We're still on what we know as a trail because it's flagged from the old days. But uh, <laughs> none of our GPS maps are showing us anything that's helpful except that we're on an old trail. And along with the flags, we know we're heading down to the river. <laughs> we know we're heading down to the river toward Horseshoe. So this will be one of those mysteries that will be solved soon if we all make it without impaling ourselves on a tree. <laughs> uh. Coming into Horseshoe, finally. <laughs> oh, what a lovely spot. What a lovely spot. Oh, wow. Yep, there's Bear Pulp. I sure do. Oh, look. The privy is back that way. Always important to know. Lovely spot. Oh, fire pits over there by the river. And Jim's going to find out where they came in last time because we may have to go back that way tomorrow. Willow Creek 3K, seldom in 10. Horseshoe, I'll show you around when we're set up. Little shot around camp. Jim's over doing the bear hangs. Never, I never see Ann doing the bear hangs. Oh, I do bear hangs. Oh, you do? Okay. I was going to say, we might have to have an investigation into that. See oh, we could have a competition. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here's the eating area we've chosen. That said, there is one, if you can see, right through here. I'll just zoom in for you. There's another eating area. Sorry, a little jumpy. Another eating area over there. Uh, I've showed you the bear hang. Lots of places to put tents, but look out for the trees. Because, eventually, trees do this. Right? And you would think, okay, these trees are on the edge. They're going to fall into the river. I'm safe. Look at that. Not so much. Anyway, always look up before you put down because uh, bad things can happen, and they have. Even as recently as a few years ago at Lake Minnewanka at a Banff campsite. So, look up. All right, I showed you where the privy was. I'm not going to bore you with the walk, but I'll show you a little bit as I head to the cleaning area. And we will not show you that. As Ann just reminded me, it's a family channel. Just a little further. It's nice they have that there because it does meander a tiny bit. And we're not going to show you the hole, but this is the largest pole part of a hole that I've ever seen. Look at the size of that thing. Oof. That'll be interesting in the morning. Ouch. All right. Just going to show you the Snake Indian River where there's a little ledge to kind of clean up on. Because uh, we're kind of up on a pretty big rise here above the river. So show you that in a sec. Just made my way down. You can tell it's super, super smoky. We can uh, certainly smell it. And there's my view as I head down to this little sort of area where I can clean up. When I get there, I just want to uh, point out something else that's really super cool. If you uh, have watched me hike the North Boundary, Ancient Wall with the Girls, or the second trip, you will remember Willow Creek. Well, you might remember it for a lot of reasons, but you'll remember it for uh, a hiker camp. And the hiker camp, if I were to say, I was going to walk up the trail three kilometers. The hiker camp's going to be right about there. So we are very, very close to the turn to the left for the North Boundary Trail, which is just so cool. All right, you're not going to see this, but uh, when I come back, I'll be cleaner. Well, again, I want to thank Jim and Ann for inviting me out on this trip. Uh, they know I'm kind of a nerd about the, this area and all of the things. And when I first... Uh, when I first met Anne, I found out that Jim's grandfather was a warden out here. And when I was first at their house, holy moly, there's this old map that just makes me feel like a geeky nerd. And then today, everything I learned on the trail was amazing. All the um, telephone insulator things they would nail to the trees and going down to Snake Indian uh, Shelter and, and the history that's there. And um, I'll talk at the end about Jim's grandfather's uh, video prowess, but I mean... Tell us a little bit more about your grandfather, what he did out here, the heritage, the history. He started working for the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the warden service in the late 30s. And his first district was the Rocky River District. And then it was the Smoky River District. And then the Moline, 
Then he went to town and became the chief warden. Um, although he never actually worked this district as the chief or the primary warden here, he certainly did traverse this district um, as an active warden. But in later years, as a chief warden, he would go out annually on horseback to to see the backcountry firsthand and not just have to rely on the reports of others to say, yeah, everything back there is good, everything back there is bad. He wanted to see it for himself and find out what was what. <clears throat> so when it comes time to allocating resources, he had a firsthand experience about what was going on there. Plus, I suppose he could check up on the wardens to make sure they were doing what he felt was necessary. <laughs> Keep the staff in line. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I've always been interested in is, is what the life of a warden was like back then. Um, I happen to know it's quite different now uh, for the warden service, but, but what, you know, what was a year like for your grandfather? Well, in his day, he was stationed on a district, and that meant that he lived in the district 12 months out of the year. Wow. and through summer or winter and he was expected to be on the district doing patrols three weeks out of every month so during the summer that meant he was on his horse three weeks out of every month and he'd be back to the main cabin that had my grandmother and my mother and, and my mother's sister well, well, wait a second explain that the whole family was there yes the entire family lived on the district That's amazing. Um, and they lived in an isolated cabin that is their home. So the girls did um, correspondence classes for school and grandma mostly raised the kids because grandpa was away so much. Right. Um, but you know in the winter time he was out on his snowshoes for three weeks out of every month um, patrolling on his snowshoes. So they lived quite a quite a, an active backcountry life that was probably an awful lot of work. <laughs> traveling from from warden's cabins to shelter to warden's cabins and then back again um, and that was I think quite a significant difference from the way it's done today okay so all that time in the backcountry there must be a story or two that was passed down anything come to mind well uh, unfortunately um, I didn't get to know him because shortly after he retired from the warden service he passed away but there's lots of family lore and family stories, and I have come across some of his old letters and his old notes. And one was a, uh, a trip actually to the Willow Creek Warden's Cabin, um, as he was he was the chief at that point in time, so he was doing an inspection trip. And he got to the Willow Creek Cabin and clearly sat down and wrote his notes on his thoughts for the day. And I, I have those notes, and one of them makes reference to the fact that the telephone lines were not in very good shape. And he didn't really appreciate that, and he, in his notes, said, you'd think the warden would have fixed that up knowing that the boss was coming. <laughs> I don't know if the warden ever got reprimanded or not, but it was in his notes. And today those notes live on to say, buddy, you weren't doing a very good job. I think he implied this guy might have been a bit lazy for his taste. Um, he was treed by a moose for eight hours at a time. What? A moose, oh. a moose treed him one time, and the moose kept chasing back his horse. So the moose would back off, Grandpa would call the horse back over, the horse would come to the base of the tree, the moose would charge at the horse again, the horse would take off. Yeah. And this went on for eight hours. He was up the tree waiting for this moose to finally settle down a bit. Eventually he did settle down. Grandpa was able to skinny down the tree and, and jump onto the back of his horse and <laughs> off he went. Was he late for supper? That's what I want to know, probably. He was probably late <laughs> probably for supper. Late for supper. <laughs> He'd have been reprimanded by your grandma, for yeah, that's sure. That's right. <laughs> so listen, last question. So you, you guys have been out here a lot. You went up Ancient Wall. You're, you're now exploring these areas that are part of your heritage. Like, how do you feel when you're out here and seeing all of these, well, the signs and the, the cabins and the, even the, the, telephone, uh, the telephone insulators? You know, the, the connection to a... a to a family member that I really never did know because again he, he passed away when I was so young uh, is, is rather a, a neat way to to make connection with somebody who, who you didn't know but you would have liked to know. Um, he also did a lot of filming in the backcountry and I have a lot of his films and so 
and tell and I'm, stories, Stuart. You're not the original YouTuber. <laughs> That's the perfect segue. But go ahead, and then I'm going to. I'll talk about that at the end. Yeah. Anne and I have have made it uh, uh, kind of a summer's tradition now for many years to follow the trails that he filmed way back when um, using his eight millimeter camera and and going to the places that he went and and it's it's a neat family connection and 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 gives us a nice excuse to wander around the park and that that's always good too <laughs> okay so the last thing i have to say is that at, at your home i was there and we brought out the all the eight millimeter millimeter has been converted to video now so you can watch it on a dvd and your grandfather would take the eight millimeter camera look this up if you don't know what that means and he put the camera down on the trail or beside the trail and film the horse's hoofs walking yep. toward you. Now, yep. if you've seen a lot of YouTube videos, you can see me coming toward the camera and then going that way. It's the same idea. And then the yep. one I really got me was he would zoom in on wildflowers yep. and hold the camera there for five or six seconds on the beautiful flowers. Yep. And I thought that man was the original YouTuber and was uh, certainly before his time capturing this ridiculously I think you place. recognize the importance of documenting a lifestyle that was changing and a mm. lifestyle that he had and wanted to pass on for prosperity's sake. Well, he did a heck of a job. He did. So anyway, thank you for sharing that. We've had uh, quite the day ourselves. <laughs> and I'll explain that in a second when I wrap things up. There's my view as we wrap up today, which ended up being a lot harder than we thought. A little bit of map confusion. And I just want to explain quickly what that was all about. So I use Gaia GPS and it has multiple layers. In the US, we can rely on Nat Geo, which is not bad. But in Canada, you're relying on Gaia or um, uh, the Canadian topo maps, which don't always show the trail where they are. But then I've discovered Backwards Back Roads Map Book Canada. It's a big mouthful. BRMB Canada Trails. And I'm going to flash up right now my track today. We were bang on. But we were confused because of the other layers that I had kind of faintly in there to double check where we were. But we were never lost, and that's pretty important. We knew we were following the Snake Indian Valley, and we knew there were blazes on the trees. And when Jim was looking and finding the, the, um, the insulators on the trees for the telephone poles, we found the mileage markers, which I showed you. We knew we were on the trail. We just expected the trail to maybe be in a different place at times. Or that perhaps because of the bypass we bypassed back at the uh, Snake Indian Shelter, that maybe we were going to head back up and have a little bit more of that wide road bed. So we got a little bit confused about that, but the GPS, this is a lesson, was spot on. And as I said, we knew exactly where we were going. And this is a stunning place. I'm thrilled to be here. Snake Indian Falls blew my mind. And having done the north boundary and, you know, gone up that way and then way, way around, uh, I missed that by coming in at Rock Lake. And one of the reasons I missed it is a lot of people say, oh, this, this section of the park isn't that, you know, isn't that pretty. Okay, you look at that and tell me that's not stunning. It really is. And then come over here and look at this and the braids in the Snake Indian River and tell me that's not just stunning. This is a stunning place to spend the night. It's peaceful, it's wild, it's out there, it's isolated and it's not crowded. I guess that's the same as isolated in, in a way. Uh, I love the Skyline Trails. I love being at Alpine. I love being above Treeline. But this is part of the National Park System as well. And this is something I encourage all of you to come out and enjoy. The North Boundary, the South Boundary, the Ancient Wall. Come around to Little Heaven. This is where the history is too, right? Well, there's history everywhere in the park. But you heard Jim talk earlier. Families lived out here keeping this place protected as a national park for years and years and years. The trails are still here. They need a little bit of love. We're going to work on that. But let's use them. Use them or lose them, as I said, after the south boundary. So anyway, it was just a glorious day, bushwhacking. We know we're going to have to do it again tomorrow. I will record it and measure it for the park. And I will leave you with this. And thank you for watching and listening. This is the North Boundary Trail in Jasper National Park, the start of it. And I highly, highly recommend you spending time out here. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Look at this. Remember last night, five seconds ago, I was just saying what a stunning place this is and it's just worth visiting. Look at the little fog, a little gray. It's all kind of burning off over there and we're going to have a pretty decent day weather-wise, we think, if Garmin is correct. So the bushwhack will be, uh, will be first. Well, first of all, the wet meadow. 
then the bushwhack, and then back to sell them in. Pretty good night's sleep. A uh, little rain overnight, which always seems to wake you up. And I wear earplugs. So I find that fascinating that even with, you know, earplugs, uh, you can get woken up by rain, but it's actually quite soothing. So we're pretty much done breakfast. And uh, we'll clean up our cacophony of stuff, pack everything up, and head back down the beautiful Snake Indian River. Just getting ready to head out. You'll never see this. I always say that you'll never see this, and then I try to show you anyway. But over there, there's a white spot. We've zoomed in. Use binoculars right there in the middle of the frame. We think that's an osprey. Yeah, there are fish over there. Anne saw them jumping last night. And so uh, we've seen lots of animals, actually. There was, uh, I think I showed you the clip of the, uh, of the elk that ran across the river last night and then made a kind of a weird barky call, which I'd never heard before, which is kind of cool. Four rabbits, did you say? Yep. Four rabbits, and then we saw what we think was a great horned owl yesterday, and it was enormous. So let's see what we see today. This is something I want you to see if you ever come to this campsite. That is a cornice of earth. And I could actually be standing on a little bit of it, who knows. But if you're coming here to Horseshoe, just be aware, lots of erosion on this bank. I wouldn't get too close, because you never know. Like, look at that right there. Let me just get a little closer for you, look. I mean, that's just completely hollowed out under there, so just FYI. All right, we're off. You can tell it's going to be a smoky day. Look at the sun. Nice and orange. Hey, oh, sorry. Hi there. Nice and orange. Here's the trail. If you go this way, sorry for the quickness, you go that way up to uh, Willow Creek. If you go this way, <laughs> bushwhack. There goes Ann. Bye. Bye. Gonna lose her in the willows. Yes, that's the trail. Oh boy. Well, it'll be interesting to see how much of this there is in kilometers. And most of it's new. So the trail is actually in pretty darn good shape up this way until the big January storm. See all the green? As I said yesterday, even on the deciduous trees. So that's a real shame. It's always hard to keep up out here, but when you get one of those big storms when the trees have their full foliage, cover up a trail as you can see you get to these sections that are long you're like all right which way do we go I could obviously let me show you but you're picking ourselves way down there I think we weren't even on this part yesterday we were swinging around somewhere I yeah I don't remember this part but uh, stay tuned we think we've made it through the worst of it so 2.14 kilometers from camp is where the worst of it seems to have ended. Uh, that includes the meadow, but uh, that's a pretty long stretch. Very mossy. We were talking about how these trees, you know, they'll grow, but they really don't have a lot of hold. So something happens like that and poof, they all come down. There'll be more deadfall along the way, but you know, a few here and there's expected. That was... <laughs> Well, I just said that's the worst bushwhacking I think I've ever done. Yep. Yeah, we had to go backwards at one point, so. All part of the fun. I can back up the way we could. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, a little milestone for us. We're kind of wondering when we're going to get back to these little, well, this is a long sort of boardwalky bridge. There's another one, little one up the way here as we walk. So we're making progress now. We can actually set a bit of pace, <laughs> which is cool. What happened? Oh, stuck the pole. <laughs> that can actually jerk you around. You have to be careful. Yeah. We came by this yesterday and it was very smart. It was Jim, right? It was having a smart day yesterday? Every day, yes. Every, oh, every day. Oh, man. Uh, uh, no comment. But you can see it looks like a, a wheel, but this is where the branches would have come out during growth, right? Yep. And now it's all hollowed out. Pretty cool. Keep your eyes open on the trail.
Just looked at Gaia and we're about a kilometer and change away from the little spur trail that took us down to the horse camp. The old Snake Indian shelter area, we think. Well, we're pretty sure. So now we're going to start looking left for what should be the hiker trail because back at that cutoff that I showed you yesterday, there's a big sign that says hikers go this way. Well, let's try to find it because we didn't see it off to our right as we came up yesterday, which added to the Gaia versus Backroads map book confusion. Stay tuned. Well, here we are. We <laughs> The sign is rather hidden. We've come up uh, from the horse trail, or horse camp, sorry. We come up this trail down here, and that was the cutoff. And of course, let me just go to where we would have come up. Uh, right here, and our eyes would have been on this dead fall on the trail, for sure. But if you just look down here, there's a slight track. And then this way is the hiker trail. It's going to be very short, I think, spur trail. But uh, we're going to walk it and... Later, I'll show up on Gaia. Uh, I'll flash up on Gaia, like the map, just to show you the difference between the two walks. I'm gonna flash that up actually right now. There it is, you can see the little bypass that we just walked, or we'll just walk. <laughs> oh, hi, Ann. <laughs> Almost said, let's turn back. This is the hiker trail and, uh, wow. And not all of this is new. I was thinking that was not a chain ring. Yeah, no. Noticed a little drift fence here. So this kind of proves that that was the shelter for sure down there. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Converted to a horse camp. And we're back to the intersection. Ugh. And I think I showed you this yesterday. Celestine Lake is tomorrow night, 23k away, seldom in. Well, we showed you that yesterday. But we're back off to Shale Banks, much nicer campsite. Now from this end, the hiker go that way. Let me just turn around here. Pretty easy to see. And I'm going to flash up the total distance in uh, meters of that bypass. Here it is. Yeah, so that's your little bypass. I don't know, guys, what would you think? I might recommend going down and seeing that horse camp for lunch and then staying on that trail. It was much nicer. Camp as well worth the visit. Yeah, and the trail was much nicer as well. There's a lot of dead fall on this. A lot. So, all right, mystery solved. <laughs> we just stopped suddenly. We heard, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Look, four-leaf clover. Make a wish. Oh, I'm making wishes. All right, there we go. Wow, nice. Uh -huh. That's, uh, Jim, we need to start looking, buddy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Especially this patch, it's a good okay, luck Okay, wait a minute. Let's have a look. And just said, listen to that. You can hear the rumble. It sounds like a subwoofer of the falls. This is where we were yesterday. We showed you. What a spot. Snake Indian Falls. Come on in and see them. Well, I've said this many times, and uh, we were just commenting on it as well. In this case, this sign. Oh, hang on. Where are you? Hi. This sign says that seldom in is two and a half kilometers. However, at the at the cutoff, it said it was one kilometer. We don't think it's either, is it? What did you think, Jim? It's about two and a half. Okay. Yeah, so one of the signs is right, one of them is not. And uh, you see that all over the parks, actually, especially here in Jasper. So just, you know, have a map, which tends to be a lot more accurate in many cases. And just said, that's really pretty. And it is. It's a little smoky. But that's life here now. And you can't just wait for clear days or you probably won't be out much. Look at that. And then if I just go this way. Look at that. Starting our long-awaited descent. <laughs> I think this is uphill both ways. <laughs> yeah, and never told me about this being so much uphill. Now we're descending now and we'll uh, keep this general feeling until we get into camp. Be a big climb out tomorrow. Whoops, sorry guys, a big climb out tomorrow. And then uh, pretty much generally downhill to Celestine Lake. 
So next up should be camp. And we're back to shale banks. I've already shown you around, so we're gonna go set up, clean up, have some supper. Whew, another great day on the North Boundary Trail. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. Well, we walked back from um, Horseshoe on day three. Three? Three. Three. Somebody always tells me. And uh, we're just sitting here hydrating our supper, trying to figure out what the highlight of the day was. And, uh, well, I'm going to hedge that over to you guys. Are you in the frame? Yep. Please. Oh, good. What was, your, what, was the, <laughs> what was the highlight of the day? Highlight of the day. Huh. Had to be the rumble that you feel at the ground near Snake Indian Falls. Very, very cool. That is it. It's a neat experience because you know we're close to the falls, but you can feel it. Yeah, it's like a subwoofer. Yeah. Yeah. And? Uh, successfully getting through all that deadfall without impaling myself on something. <laughs> yeah, that it was, was tough. Pretty crazy. Yeah, over two kilometers. Yeah. And what about the two four leaf clovers? Yeah. Two four leaf clovers. Two yeah. four leaf clovers. There's so much clover, and I thought, wouldn't that be cool to find a four leaf clover? And I did, and then I found a second one. Like, yeah, so so Anne's gonna go buy a lottery ticket uh, when we get out of here on Friday. Lucky, lucky little leprechaun. <laughs> Except what? She's a lucky little leprechaun. Lucky little leprechaun finding the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Now, if I zoom up here, I don't know if you can see that, but the it's almost gone. But the uh, the sun is that. There it is. The sun is that smoky orange. So no pot of gold until we get some rain and maybe it'll wash away the smoke. But excited about tomorrow. You know why? We're going to Celestine Lake. Yeah. And I've never been there, but when we looked at the North Boundary, the girls and I, that was going to be night one just getting set up. So I'm pretty excited about that. Also excited about supper. Tonight, chicken and mashed potatoes. Yes. And you guys? Rabbit stew. <laughs> Pad Thai. <laughs> and with that, we'll say goodnight. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Day four. And I'm working on a mystery this morning. Let me just bring this down slowly and show you. So this is a Big Agnes sleep system bag and you can see the end right down there is wet. No, it was not touching the tent. Guaranteed, not touching the tent. And there's dew condensation on top of it, but just in that spot, it happens every night. And now it's joined with the spot right up here, which was kind of on its own. So that's a mystery to me. I looked to see if there was like, you know, down shifting or anything like that and there's not there's down there so if you know comment below but uh that's a mystery for me and uh, it's been very very consistent the other thing i've noticed this morning is that about 5 a.m my tent was dry and uh inside like no condensation i had three or four flaps open and i was like oh this is great the tent's not going to be wet by about 6 30 wet so ann and i were discussing the dew point we're very, very technical out here on the trail. So looking forward to today after a little coffee and breakfast because it's Celestine Lake. And uh, that's pretty exciting. Are you excited? Very excited. How'd you sleep? You're not on camera, bad. by the way. Not too, not too bad. <laughs> um, a little bit sore legs yep. from, from the effort yesterday, but yep. nothing that some good medication can't take care of. Good medication. There you go. Yeah. And today will be a lot easier. I mean, it's now we're back on the road. No big like kilometers of deadfall to climb over, which uh, you know, is tiring after a while. So, and be interesting to see what the rest of the North Boundary is like after January here in the big snowstorm, because uh, wow, that two kilometers was pretty epic. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen deadfall quite like that. And it just happened, you could tell it just happened. So anyway, it's gonna be a great day. We're off to the lakes. Opening up here, but it's gonna be really hard to show you anything. It's smoky, smoky, and then uh, Here's the other good example of smoky. The sun. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to breathe too, actually, to be honest with you. It's uh, just one of those things now we just expect in the summers, which is unfortunate in so many ways. 
but if you didn't come out you probably wouldn't get to hike much I'm waiting for a clear smokeless rainless day so get out no matter what really nice when you get on a trail you can walk side by side unless you're the third wheel <laughs> and that's me bringing up the rear of the tricycle that's a thorn between two roses. Oh boy, yeah. No wonder I'm single! <laughs> Just stopped. That's two more four leaf clovers for a total of four. Yeah. How many lottery tickets are we buying when we get four. back to the four lottery tickets? Or at least I have to buy dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that makes you lucky then. <laughs> I don't know if that's luck. Oh my god. Four four-leaf clovers Four. on the North Boundary Trail. That's that's crazy. 12.24 kilometers, so the little sign wins. I'll swing around and show you this one more time. Yeah. That's that wins. That does not. <laughs> but what a thrill to see this sign. I mean I said it uh, uh, earlier in the video. Just a thrill to finally see that one sign, the North Boundary Trail. Woo! Now, off to Celestine Lake, which I've also been waiting to see for years. I'll show you that too. Gonna go up here to the left. That was a very short walk. You just come up here and swing around. And you can see a yellow diamond up here on the tree to get you into Celestine Lake. Well, that's a bit of a surprise. We had our gators off in optimistic anticipation. And she's wet. Or at least I have mine off. Jim's got his on. All right. So we were looking at the map at the break, thinking about water. Obviously, we're on a lake, but all lakes are not great, so we don't know yet. So we looked at the map, and there was a drainage of Princess Lake. And we thought, okay, good. There might be like a swift-moving creek or something there. Nope. That was it. Jim spied some fresh beaver work and obviously the boys are back in town. That goes up to Devona Lookout and this goes to Celestine Lake. Lookout, huh? Lookout, 2.5 kilometers. There you go. Yep. All right. We're still meandering toward the campsite. And there's an old concrete pad here. Pretty good size, looks like an old cabin. Some sort, yeah. Because of the size of it. Little shot there of the lake. Yeah, smoky. But here we go. Oh, and just said, oh wow. So I'll keep rolling. I thought we were right on top of it, which is why I said I'd show you camp when we set up, but we weren't, we had a little more walking to do. Holy goodness, firewood. Ah. Oh wow, look at this. All the old cable bear hangs. All right, now we're gonna set up. Oh, then I'll show you around. <laughs> Little tour around camp and we've all agreed we love it. We love it. Celestine Lake, look at this. Uh, just over there you come down and there's a uh, like a little dock of logs that goes out. You can have a nice little clean off, a little rinse, grab a little water. There are two different eating areas here. We've just come here, which is near the, the bear hang. Speaking of water. Oh, don't step on your solar charger, Stu. I wandered over here earlier. You know, we're always looking for pieces of history, right? Oh, hear that? Yeah. This is cool. So not only did we see that old cement pad when we came in. Look, look at this. Look. It's an actual water pump. Show us how it's done, Ann. Okay. All right. <laughs> and it looks crystal clear. It does. Any smell to it? Nope. Nothing. Wow. Old school water pump. So get your water where you like it. Quickly, I'll just come back here. Show you where I've set up. I'm in uh, tent pad number two. 
which is back this way. My cacophony of stuff, which may come inside soon because I hear thunder. Lots of bear sign, however. So, yep, so I'm here. Ann and Jim are over here. Ann's getting the water. Jim's doing the tent. Another tent pad here. Another one back there. And the privy is back this way. And it's the green space capsule. Yeah, the green space capsule kind. So just doing some laundry and drying some stuff off. That is camp. And we agree. We love it. Two and a half K up the hill to the lookout. About 150 meter gain if that's your thing. So anyway, there's your tour of camp. I have to say, if you have a vehicle that can get in this road, it's a short little walk and you're here. This little piece of paradise. Just listen. Nice view of the lake. We have some unsettled weather, but it's clearing up the smoke. If you look back, rewind a little, you'll see that exact same shot, basically. We can hardly see any of those trees going up that ridge. So it's uh, just a gorgeous night here and quiet, and we're alone. And uh, it's supper time. Then we're going to turn in because we may do a little side hike tomorrow. It depends on the smoke. Might go up to the lookout so we can see over Devona. So that would be fun. Mm -hmm. What's for supper tonight, kids? Chili-ish. Chili-ish. <laughs> there it is. Some sort of chili in there. There it is chili-ish. And funny thing yep. is, I've got one of these too, this mountain chili, which is a vegetarian dish, which I didn't know until I looked at the bag. So we had an excellent day. Um, kind of short. We had a leisurely afternoon, a little relaxing after three. Pretty long and some pretty, you know, tough days as far as deadfall and elevation gain and all that sort of stuff so we're gonna have supper and turn in and uh we'll let you know what we're doing in the morning it's a game day decision but either way we have to get back to the trailhead uh, at celestine lake parking lot so we can catch the one-way traffic always look that up so you don't create a traffic jam on the crazy one lane road which i will show you on the way out tomorrow see you in the morning good morning day five it's our getaway day, and uh, look at that lake. Isn't that beautiful? Look, a little steam coming off of it over here. Woodpeckers were the alarm clock this morning. Well, except maybe that fella. <laughs> Not a songbird. No, I know. Quite a night. Rain. Had to batten down the hatches. Ann was out with her headlamp, uh, putting her tent back together and getting things off the tree. I think Jim was in the tent in a fetal position. I don't know. Something was happening. But <laughs> no, the thunderstorms rolled in. The trees were creaking. Branches were falling. I mean, if you look around Celestine Lake campsite, it's just a good example of dead trees or, you know, trees that don't want to stand up anymore. So it was an interesting night. So I, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I need some coffee. Goodbye, Celestine Lake. Or Celestine, Celestine, potato, potato. I'm sure there's a proper pronunciation. A better, better, a little better sun today than we had yesterday. A little less orange. So we're going to head up to the lookout to see Devona. By the way, day five of the birthday shirt. <laughs> and there's no stink. It's ridiculous. It's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> well, this trail not quite maintained to the same level. As you've experienced up to Snake Indian Falls or even on the way in from the trailhead. So, uh, we'll be picking our way up here, I think. Whoa. We're almost to the top and, uh, Pretty sure this is part of the Cheddarman Wildfire. Get all the way up here. Didn't get too, too far across the trail though, if you look in deep. But it got up here, certainly at the top, both sides of the trail. Views are starting to open up, but uh, speaking of fire, a bit smoky. It was still awesome. And it wouldn't be a morning for Ann without a climb. No. What was that? Nothing, didn't say a word, nothing. Starting to open up a bit now. Wow. 
Yeah, a little further than advertised. I'll tell you what it is when I get there and uh, certainly give you a panorama. Just up here. Pretty much the end of the line. Weather station. Very cool. Yeah, I think the end of the line's right here, actually. Just up here. 2.96 kilometers to this spot. What lakes did you say those were in? Jasper and Talbot. Jasper actually. and Talbot, we think. I don't know exactly which A little further back, we can see our uh, Celestine Lake Road coming in. I'll show you that on the way back. And a little panorama, uh, panorama backwards. I want a clear day. I think we'd see probably the Palisades, you think? Pyramid? Uh, yes. Off, off, uh, in that off that way. You can kind of see an outline right over there. You really have to look for it up here. Anyway, gorgeous spot. We're going to take a break. And then, uh, well, head back the way we came. That way. Old Hawkeyes here spied this underneath the... Uh, Underneath the weather station. Hello, Birdie. What you doing? What you doing down there? We were just saying it smells really fresh from the burn. And I came up with a new word, fiery. But then I realized fiery is actually a word. But not used maybe in this context? I don't know. I'm a master of the English language. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. a bit like hot chili powder. How so? Fire's a lot like hot chili powder. How so? Fiery. Fiery. Like, like yeah. Nice chili with fiery. Burns going in. You finish the phrase. <laughs> yep, that's the trail. <laughs> this is a bad section through here. Half a day with a chainsaw, no problem. Well, there it is, Devona Lookout. We've done it. Campsite down that way. We loved it. That was a great campsite. And uh, we were talking, it would be good for one of the one night stand videos, uh, playlist videos. Because it is, if you have the right vehicle, it would be uh, a pretty nice place to spend some time. So, a little spur trail down to Princess Lake. And we have time now because we've missed our first window to get out. We will, we will miss it here shortly. So, we'll have to wait. So, we have lots of time. So, let's have a look. At Princess Lake, a little panorama. Very, oh, it's pretty. Very nice. <laughs> oh, well, our little greeting for the swamp. This doesn't really warrant the Ford cam, however, so we'll save that for another time, but... Mmm. Yeah, eh? Stopped to put my gators on, because they actually do help, just so you know. And uh, the reason I know that is in Yellowstone, I have one broken gator with no bottom strap, so it doesn't hold tight. And then I've got another gator that is tight. One boot got wet, the one with the broken gator. The other boot did not. Sorry for the crazy picture. Ah! And there's more water here this morning from the rain than there was yesterday. All right, off we go. Had to turn the camera back on. You probably saw this on day one, but these aspens are impressive, hey? Look at that. Walking through them is mystical. I almost expect there to be witches. <laughs> All right, Anne just looked at this. Uh, it's a fenced off plot to uh, study the relationships between uh, the aspen forests, animals, and fire. So uh, I don't know, how, how do they study the effect of animals if it's fenced off? I guess that's the idea. Back in the burn, we're noticing what trees survived and what trees didn't. The Chetham and Wildfire. Not so lucky. Much luckier. Isn't that weird? You know what I mean? Like that, that tree is un, basically unscathed completely. This tree, well, as you can see, not so much. Look at the age of that though, eh? When it burned? Wow. All right. Oh, look, yeah. 
there it is. We're gonna have to walk up that. That comes up from the bridge. And then over there, see that bluff over there? You can see where the car's parked. Yeah, right there. That bluff over there is where the car is. So we have a little loop-de-loop -loop to do over the bridge. And back to the trail head. It's been a good four-nighter of uh, exploration on the North Boundary Trail. Might have showed you this on the way in, but this is stunning. Just stunning. And you know, the fire did burn off some trees, and so you're even seeing stuff from this viewpoint you would probably have had a hard time catching before. Snake Indian River. Woo! Back to the Snake Indian River and this beautiful bridge. Bit of an uphill back to the trailhead. And then you know what's next. I'm gonna find out what Ann and Jim think of the hike, but I know what I think of that. Look at that. Come on in, folks. Hike this trail. Hike them all. Stunning. Well, there it is. Your truck's still here, Jim. I'm glad to hear that. All four tires are intact. Windows are there. <laughs> Never a worry, really. Look where we are. There it is. Celestine Lake to the north boundary. We'll wrap it up right now. Wow, finished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a great hike. And uh, well, I'm just going to get right to it. And Jim, how's the hike? It was amazing. <laughs> uh, it was harder than I thought it would be. Yeah. The days were long, but very rewarding and tons of deadfall, as you'll have seen. Yeah. And, uh, but just really rewarding and thrilled that we got to do it together. Mm, Jim? Uh, the history of this trail has just always fascinated me. And now to be able to walk it and see it firsthand, very cool. Well, dating, dating back to the First Nations and then the Warden Service, it's just cool. And I'm, I'm really pretty pretty happy about it. And your grandfather. Grandpa, yeah. Right, and yeah. all the history, which I was able to absorb some on this hike. And I want to say thank you again, you guys, for inviting me on this trip. You're welcome. You're you, welcome. Know it, you know it, it, it seals off the north boundary for me. And yes. uh, I was like a little giddy kid seeing yes, the sign and the falls, <laughs> and I'm still kind of perma-smiled about it. So anyway, listen, hike this trail. It's well worth it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching. And we, at some point this summer, yep. we'll see you next time. Thank you.